Климатические условия были необыкновенно суровыми. Ну, например... But it was a long way to the front. These complicated and sensitive aircraft had to go another 10,000 kilometers or more under hard weather conditions. The route was unbelievably difficult. 60 degrees below zero, uninhabited in places, and unusually severe climatic conditions. For instance, a flyer might have to make a forced landing in the mountains. For a whole month, we would have to fly in food for him. We didn't have helicopters then, so he was rescued by a deer sledge. We took about 2,000 planes a year on that route. Our factories had already made 40,000 planes. The war took many a plane, but this assistance was very symbolic due to our friendship and purposefulness. It's been a long time, but I still remember the friends that I made among the Americans, like Kachigman, Major Mibik, the base commanders. I still have a photograph. He signed it to my best friend, Colonel Mazaruk. For the rest of my life, I will always be grateful to those Americans who gave us so much help. I hope I was able to return some of their kindness when I rescued many American and British sailors whose ships had been torpedoed in the Barents Sea. Some of the Allied commanders and diplomats visited Morvansk. Andrei Gromyko, Soviet ambassador to the United States, and Avril Harriman, American ambassador to the Soviet Union. The Soviet embassy in London, 1942. Mrs. Churchill attends a reception with Soviet ambassador Maisky. Presentation of Soviet decorations to Royal Air Force officers for combat against the common enemy. Squadrons of British fighter planes were assigned to the Arctic War. They and their Soviet allies had more than one interest in common. transportation in the Arctic was adapted to wartime use. Much of the ordnance for the polar bases came into Murmansk by ship, from Murmansk by less orthodox means. war in the Arctic called for special skills. The nature of the terrain and climate made extra demands. Some of the pilots became aces. The most famous of these was Boris Safonov.
The Unknown War will continue in a moment. Or in the Arctic. Safonov made his first kill on the second day of the war. His total eventually came to 22. Whenever an opportunity presented itself, Safonov took it. Safonov, a son of a farmer, was a member of the Communist Party. He rose to the rank of lieutenant colonel in the Naval Air Force. The first Soviet pilot to be made a hero of the Soviet Union twice over, he also collected British awards for valor. Safonov did not live to enjoy the peace. He was killed flying protection over an Allied convoy. In 1944, the Red Army was everywhere on the attack. The Soviet High Command completed its plans for the Arctic Front. Its troops in Karelia were to break through to Petsamo and Pechenga. The blow fell early in the morning of October 7th, 1944. commander, General Kirill Miritskov, later Marshal Miritskov, wrote, the same divisions that had blocked the panzers from advancing to Murmansk went into battle. They were hardened soldiers, reliable and courageous fighters. Miritskov continued, just a short while before, the Nazis used to surrender only in rare cases. But here, thousands of them gave themselves up understanding that otherwise they could only await a different end. hard. In parts of it, only the infantry could move, taking with them only what they could haul with their own hands. It took a week to reach Pechenga, fighting all the way, both the Nazis and the terrain. <laughs> 